All right, welcome to the first lesson um, for Algebra 2. Um, this is about properties of real numbers and unit conversions. So um, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to answer the essential question, which is what method should I use when performing unit conversions? So that's the meat of what we're going to be talking about today, but we do also need to know the properties of real numbers. So I'm just going to review those with you really quickly, and you can take notes over the examples. So first, um, here are some of the properties of real numbers. Okay, the first one is the commutative property of addition. And here's an example of that right here. Um, a plus B equals B plus A. So you'll notice right there, the only thing that really changes is that the numbers or the letters switched places. So commutative, I see that keyword in there, commute, which means that you're moving. Like if you commute to work, you have to drive to work. So that means that the numbers or letters are switching places. And it's addition, so we know that we're adding. Okay, the next one is the associative property. Now you'll notice in this example, we have A plus B plus C equals A plus B plus C. Now, the numbers or the letters A, B, C did not change places. They stayed the same. But the parentheses on this one were around the B and the C, and then the parentheses around the second one are around the A and the B. So when the parentheses change places, that is the associative property. Now, this is how I remember that. Associates are like groups of people, um, like law firms, a lot of times they, they call them, and associates. So um, when the groups of people or the groups of numbers in the example change, then that's the associated property. And it says of addition, so that just means that we're adding. Okay, then we have the distributive property. Now, a lot of you are probably familiar with this one without even realizing it. Um, the distributive property is when you take the number on the outside and you multiply it by both of the numbers on the inside. So we're taking A times B, and then we're taking A times C. So that's where we get this part over here. So when you distribute the number or letter on the outside, that is the distributive property. Okay, then we have the substitution property. And that's when you're plugging something in or substituting something. So for in this case, we have that A equals 2. So then 3A has to equal 6 because if we substitute 2 in for A, then 3 times 2 equals 6. Okay, then we have the commutative property of multiplication. Now this is the same as the one above. Just now, instead of adding, we're multiplying. So... Um, you'll notice that the B and the A just switched places, but they're right next to each other, which implies that we're multiplying. Same thing with associative property of multiplication. We stayed in the same order, A, B, C, A, B, C, so the letters stayed in the same order, but the parentheses moved from around the B and the C to around the A and the B. So that's associative because the groups changed. Um, now here's some new ones. Identity property of addition. Now, Identity is when um, it doesn't change. So, like, if you think about your identity, it never ch really changes. Okay, so just like Superman, it's Clark Kent. He's still Clark Kent. It never changes. So that's like identity. Okay, so when I start with a 6, I should end with a 6. Okay, and when I'm adding, if I want to keep the number the same, then I would add 0 to whatever number I'm doing. So anytime you add 0 to a number, that's identity property because the number stays the same. Then we have identity property for multiplication. Now, when you're multiplying a number and you want it to stay the same, then you multiply by 1. So in this case, we started with 6, we ended with 6, but if we're multiplying, we have to multiply by 1 to keep the number the same. Okay? Um, inverse property. Inverse in math means opposite. So... If I'm doing inverse property of addition, then I'm adding opposite numbers. So 3 is the opposite of negative 3. So if I add those together, then I get 0. So when you're adding opposites, that's inverse property of addition. Then for multiplication, inverses are reciprocals. Okay, so reciprocal is when you take a fraction and you flip it over. So for example, 
the reciprocal of 1 third is 3, because if I flip it over, I would have 3 over 1. So when I multiply reciprocals, what happens is it equals 1. So that's inverse property of multiplication, because those are like opposites in multiplication. Okay. Now let's get into some unit analysis and unit conversions. This is the actual um, part that you're going to have to work out today. So when we're doing unit analysis, we're converting quantities to amounts per unit. So like miles per hour, dollars per hour, things like that. So for example, if you work four hours, you earn $36. What is your earning rate? Now, whenever I do word problems, I always try to take a step back and look at the problems and pick out the important parts. Okay, so first the question is saying, what is your earning rate? So that means that I'm trying to find out how much money I'm making. So I'm going to switch back to my pen here. I'm making money. Now when you have a job, you make dollars per hour worked. So I'm trying to figure out the dollars per hour, my pay rate. Okay, so I'm going to write down what I know. I know that I made $36 in four hours. Okay, and the reason why I put the dollars on top is because I'm trying to find the dollars per hour. So this would be dollars per hour. So then if I just divide that, 36 divided by 4 equals $9 per hour. So that was pretty easy. Alright, let's take a look at another question. You travel for two and a half hours at 50 miles per hour. How far do you go? Now this one's a little bit tricky because we don't want our answer to be in like miles per hour like the last question we had dollars per hour but this time it says how far do you go so our answer is going to be in what unit of measure if it's asking how far we're asking the miles that we've traveled so when we set this up we're going to write down what we have and then we're going to do something called a, I call it a conversion chart. So I have two and a half hours. Okay. And I'm going 50 miles per hour. So I'm going to multiply by 50 miles per hour. So that's one hour. Now, when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. So we would take 2.5 times 50, and then this is like it has a 1 underneath it, since it's not a fraction. So then we would just multiply 1 times 1 on the bottom. Well, that doesn't really change anything, so really the bottom isn't necessary here. So if I take 2.5 times 50, my hours go away because there's 1 on top and 1 on bottom, so those cancel out. So then if I take 2.5 times 50, then I get 125, and I have miles left over. So that would be my answer. I would travel 125 miles if I was going 50 miles per hour for two and a half hours. All right, let's look at another one. Okay, now we're going to get into some conversions. Now, a conversion is when you change something. So it says you drive 45 miles per hour. What is your speed in feet per second? So we're changing miles per hour to feet per second. So we're converting these. So we're going to set this up similar to the last problem that we did. Okay. First, I always write down what I have. Okay. So if you want to write down the steps, first you always write down what you have. So I have 45 miles. Per hour, so that's per one hour. So in one hour, I'm going 45 miles. Okay, and it says, what is your speed in feet per second? So I need to change my miles to feet, and I change to change my hours to seconds. So I'm. It doesn't matter which one you do first. 
but to do this we set up a chart so we're going to multiply by a fraction okay now the first thing I need to do is I need to set up my labels over here I'm trying to change my miles into feet so I need to put my miles on the bottom because I want my miles to cancel out so it has to go opposite of where it is before so that they cancel out and so then I'm changing my miles to feet so I'm going to put the feet on top so now you have to ask yourself how many feet are in one mile okay now some of you may know this I have it memorized but um, if you don't know there are 5,280 feet in one mile. So now we're going to fill that in on our chart. So we know that in one mile, there are 5,280 feet. So you set it up like that. So now our miles have canceled out, and we successfully converted to feet. So we're done with that part. Now we need to change our hours to seconds. Now, you can figure out how many seconds are in an hour, but it's easier for me to just step down gradually. So I'm going to go from hours to minutes and then from minutes to seconds because that's easier for me. So I'm going to go to minutes next. Now if my hours are on the bottom and I want to cancel it out, then I need to put the hours on top so that they cancel out. And so the minutes are going to go on the bottom. So now my hours will cancel out like that. Okay, so now I need to ask myself, how many minutes, oops, I lost my pen, minutes in an hour? And the answer is 60. So I'm going to put 60 minutes in one hour. Okay, my hours canceled out. Now I need to go from minutes to seconds. So if my minutes are down here, where do I put my minutes over here? I would put them on the top. That way they cancel out. And my seconds go on the bottom. And I know that there are 60 seconds in one minute. So I fill that in. And then I'm going to cross these out because they cancel out. So now I have feet and seconds. So I've successfully done it. Now I just got to work it out. So I'm going to multiply it across the top and across the bottom and then work it out. So now I'm going to take 45 times 5,280 times 1 times 1, which would equal 237,600 feet. And on the bottom I have 1 times 1 times 60 times 60, which would equal 3,600 seconds. And I want to make this simpler, so I'm going to divide it. So 237,600 divided by 3600 is 66, and this is in feet per second. So that is my answer. Okay, um, there are some conversions that you guys may need to know um, to help you out with problems from this chapter things that might show up on the test. So you will need to um, try to memorize these conversions down here. Um, and when you're finished, make sure that you go back through your Cornell notes and you can review and revise, put some questions in on the left-hand side that you still have questions about that we can talk about in class. You can highlight some keywords and then you can use those to help you write your summary. And we will kind of work on this in class, so if you're having trouble, you can ask me about it in class next time you see me. Thank you.